Hi there guys, Professor Tomney with another Chem Complete practice session. So what we're going to look at practicing today is resonance structures. So the goal here, I've written out three different structures, all of which contain a charge. And your goal is to show all the potential resonance structures or alternate structures that can host this charge and delocalize this charge. So give this a shot. Go ahead and pause the video work on all three of these. I would strongly encourage you to try to work through these first before you just go through the answer walkthrough. Afterwards, go ahead and unpause it, continue to let it run, and see how well you did. So I will see you guys in just a minute. All right, welcome back, everybody. So for the first problem here, we have a negative charge adjacent to this double bond. Now remember that one of the rules of resonance that we need to consider is that pi electrons and lone pair electrons need to be one space away from one another in order to basically allow this resonance to occur. So the alternative resonance structure in comparison to what we have right here, we would be able to take one of these pairs, create a double bond with the carbon, and move a set up onto the oxygen. And so come along here and my alternative resonance structure, I would only have one in this case, would be the O minus, which now has the brunt of the negative charge, double bond nitrogen, there's still a lone pair here because there were originally two on that nitrogen, and then there's a methyl group. And extra points, if you realize that this is the major contributor because the oxygen is more electronegative than the nitrogen is, so this would be the minor contributor out of the group. So hopefully you got that one. Next one, we have this uh, five-membered carbon ring. If I have a set of electrons here, I can push them either way. So you may have gone to the right, you may have gone to the left. I'll just start by going to the left. I can create a double bond between these two carbons. These electrons then get pushed a space away from where that new double bond forms. So my first resonance structure here, again, I draw my five-membered ring. I now have a double bond here. This would be the new location of the negative charge, and I still have a double bond over here. Now I could move this again. I could take these, create a double bond here, and I could move this and deposit these electrons up here. And so if I were to take a look at this final structure here, I would have double bond here. I would have a double bond along the bottom. And now this corner over here is hosting the negative charge. So three potential resonance structures here where there were only two above. All of these are going to be equal in their delocalization because they're all sp3 hybridized carbons that are hosting the negative charge there um, and I mean you can talk about the sp2 because you're going around with resonance and the double bonds because those are sp2 hybridized when you're moving the the uh, negative charge back and forth hosting those in uh, p orbitals but the the bottom line is that all of these carbons are equivalent to one another when we're looking at them. And so there is no major or minor contributor here. They're all equal to one another. And then finally, for the last one, we would have the ability to move a double bond here. And we could move it up this way. So in that case, we would have the following, CH3, CH2, C, and now this O has the minus charge because we moved the pi electrons up onto that oxygen. I now have a double bond to this CH, C double bond O, CH3, okay? So in this case, the oxygen has the negative charge here. There's another oxygen on the other side, and so it is also possible where I would have another one that looks like this, CH3, CH2. In this case, I keep the one on the left, how it is, but I would move these electrons over to the right instead, and then I would move this one up. 
So if that's the case, I then have CH double bonded to C with an O minus here on the right hand side, and then finish that off with the CH3 methyl group right there. So these would be the options. Again, sorry about that. Again, if I'm looking at the negative charges right here, one time it's found on a carbon, the other times they are found on oxygens. And so the cases where they're found on the oxygens are going to be the, both of these are going to be the major contributors. And this guy over here is going to be your minor contributor because carbon is not as electronegative as oxygen is. So hopefully you guys found this useful. If you're having any trouble with resonance, please go back and watch the video lecture on resonance structures and delocalization of charge. Very, very important concept to understand. Uh, I would, again, encourage you to work through these types of problems before you go through the answers. At least attempt them a little bit by yourself first. See how far you can get. So other than that, uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys for the next lesson. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.